So hello everybody, uh, my name is Dairon. I work here uh, with the private cloud team. That's uh, the three people that are sitting out there. So our team dedicated, as the name suggests, to uh, manage all the virtualization platform here in Adyen uh, and the storage too. And by the storage, we mean uh, in this case. So uh, today I'm going to talk about a little about our experience here with Ceph, uh, our challenge, uh, uh, different challenge phases, uh, the experience, future goals, etc. So the content will be uh, first, why Ceph in Adyen? Why not other action? There is a lot of storage options out there, but we, we should Ceph. Our journey so far with ups and downs, more ups and downs. Challenge I face it, I personally pick uh, just one, just to talk about that, that a little. And our future plans, what next? So first, uh, everybody here know what is uh, what are the advantages of Ceph. There is a lot uh, compared to another solution, but for us, these are the main one that why we pick Ceph. First is the integration with our existing tooling. Here in Adyen, we manage all the infrastructure basis as code. So uh, every, I think that 99 or more than that percent is managed through GitHub operation, GitHub flows. So everything is managed as code. So whatever system we choose and we pick has to be managed that way. No manually is staging to the server and doing manual operation. Second, the integration with company startups. We are now the integration with Ceph with Open Start is very great. Not only are uh, as, as a block uh, backing storage, we can use Ceph with Open Start just to provide uh, object storage, file storage. Normally, people use uh, only RBD, but it's possible if you want to use the file storage and, and object storage using Open Start with the uh, Swift uh, API or SV API. And finally, we can host different types of storage using Ceph. For us, this is important that we could, we. Could, we we don't want to integrate another system and onboard another uh, other system or storage just to provide a Charify system or just uh, or just uh, or just storage. We can use Ceph and we can whatever we want. We can export three and use three at the same time. Right. So for us, this is our main uh, goal to use a storage system. So our journey so far. At the beginning, we start with uh, our local JVM plus Ceph deployment. It's a kind of uh, hyper convenient fashion. That works well, do not. So for a smart workload, that is pretty fine. We can do whatever we want, but when your workload starts to increasing, then the problem comes, start to come. And then we face a different issue, recovering virtual machines, uh, the API doesn't work, a leap wheel doesn't work, that kind of thing. So we decide after this kind of environment to move to Swift to dedicate a cluster. Now, Ceph has his own hardware, his own, is the only system installing on the hardware, and we are doing fine. So every system, in this case, open stack, uh, any container infrastructure that need to communicate with Ceph is fine. We only allow firewall and communicate with Ceph, we are fine. But uh, that, that solution escalates quickly. We can scale to better bytes if we want, but uh, we make a kind of mistake with that. We use uh, we create the dedicated cluster, self cluster, but using so we we use the three interfaces in the in the same cluster, CephFS, uh, RBD, and Azure Store, and that works fine. But let's say that you have a customer that are using RBD and just consuming half of the cluster, but the S3 user at that time was uh, not a big deal. But then suddenly you have to onboarding an, an S3 user that will use the the storage. A lot, but guess what? The RBD is already consuming all that kind of storage. And the thing getting worse is the kind of data that you are onboarding has different requirements from the security point of view. So you are mixing not only different kinds of storage types, you are mixing different kinds of data with different kinds of requirements. So this is and here in Adyen for us, the security is a very serious topic. So we want to avoid that. And that's why we now we are deploying the, the the same thing dedicated cluster with some hardware but now we are differing, differentiating between right uh, of so life environments and uh, office environment now we have and um, only not only by get the kind of data if also using different uh, for example only we have one cluster only for a three or one cluster only for cffs and we differentiate all that and right now with that kind of deployment we are doing fine we are Doing uh, the thing what we want. That's more or less the our journey so far. So 
this was more or less the achievement that we are made with Ceph. First, uh, one of the most important has become the S3 total solution adopted widely from the entire company. At the beginning, was some doubts about to use S3 widely or not, back by Ceph, but right now, people are uh, feeling comfortable with Ceph and with the service we provide as a team. And everybody in the company is to start using S3 for whatever reason, for container, sol container solutions, or even for almost any application in the company. Another, the number two is uh, Ceph is allowed with the migration of the adding application. Here in Adyen, we have a kind of goal. We have uh, some stack of legacy application, writing in so many language, but we want to containerize that application. And it's a kind of difficult to containerize that kind of application without an S3 storage interface. So you need to decouple the, your application, your logic from your storage, and you want to run that container wherever in any part of the world. So you need to communicate with the storage in any place. That's why Ceph comes to the picture. Uh, we are working right, right now with that, and uh, the company, I think, is really fine with that. As always, it's, it's not only used for S3 storage, it's also used there for the backend of, for, of, for open style applications. So every, every retail machine here in the company that need more storage, that need to increase the storage in the future, we, that need a huge amount of storage, let's say terabytes or even more, no, we use that for that. Normally, at the beginning, we use a combination of local storage in the hypervisor, but as you might expect it, if you want more, if you want more storage, we use that for that. Is doing fine without the issue with the snatch SME. For the and, and now the fourth point that maybe for the customer is not more important, but is important for us in the tele department as the, we made it to integrate very, very nice, I would say, the, all the internal tooling and framework here in Adding with Ceph. Now we are able to control Ceph. We are existing tooling without, we have a lot of work to do on that, but we are trying to build um, and write some scripts on some, some things to control from our, our perspective all the operations in Ceph. Still, there is a lot to do in Ceph. There is a lot of things that you can do, but our, our goal is to manage all Ceph operations from the old side of Ceph. So this is just simple facts, just to, to see as my, to do a small configuration to show you all oh, this is, is going on. For example, this is uh, uh, the status of Ceph at the end of 2022, and this is the status of in the present. We have started only with 27 S3 accounts. Right now, we have around 215 S3 accounts. We have started processing only around 10K S3 requests processing per day. Now we are talking about 53 million S3 requests per day. If we say that even more in some days. We start from 100 RBD image, mainly for office and infra purpose. Now we are talking about almost 1,000 RBD image. And uh, according to the CFS side, we are starting with 600 and now we are 400. The reason for that is that here in the company, we're trying to move away from CFS in favor of RBD and, and S3. I think that in the future, that number 400 will decrease a little. So, about challenge faces, we are facing a lot of challenge with Ceph. This is one IP because it's one of the most important here in the company. We have um, a typical use case as everybody in the company. We have a typical S3, S3 endpoint with a Ceph uh, back of all the scenes. And we have, for example, we have some application your service pipeline that communicate directly with the S3 with the API endpoint using the S3 account. But that's probably fine. They retrieve the C, the S3 account credential for a secret engine. They get the credential, they communicate with the S3, and that's fine from a security point of view. But what happened with developers? Developers need to access to the S3 endpoint as well to use sync with the bucket. But what happened if they you allow SSH directly into a Rust gateway? That's fine for us, but for a security point of view, they don't like that such. So we need to create a way in that time to allow secure developer people to do manual operation in that S3 bucket we, in a security fashion. So we create some kind of hop host in the middle that uh, to control the certain thing. And guess what is the name of the hop host? S3 hop host. So what is this hop host? They are us basic, they are two different bits of machine buying to every endpoint here in the company. And every time, uh, Every host post, we have two, yeah, for HI, HI purpose. 
And the most important thing is that we use the internal ELDA group here in the company to match with that, uh, with that uh, S3 permission the user can do. For example, and this is, was the final solution. We put some, this thing in the middle, and then the, every time the developer wants to access an S3 uh, account, they need to log in this specific VM, and according to the ELDA group they belong, they can do certain things with the S3, with the S3 account. Could be rewrite, admin permission, change the ACL, whatever. But the most important thing is, at the same time, they don't get direct access to the to the S3 account credential because we are using the uh, SDS uh, feature with the Rouse Gateway, and we map with the internal tooling that we develop for that the S the SDS token with the Elda group uh, with the Elda group on, uh, here in the company, and then they can go to the three API, do whatever they want in a security fashion, and now security. So this is uh, our future plan. First, we want to, here in the company, we have a few clues that we set, but with different versions. We'll deploy in different time, then we pick the, the last version uh, of the time of deploy. So we have from, from Pacific to Octopus, I think that even Luminous. So our uh, first goal will be to break all that to the latest version, in this case, Fleet, Reef. And then after we finish with that, we add trying to uh, use the S3 multi-site deployment. We are here in the company, we have certain use cases that with S3 multi-site will be a great fit for that. But we are aware that with Quincy, there is a lot of no issues with the replication in, in big scale with the multi-site deployment. That's why we first want to migrate to Reef and then try with this multi-site deployment. And then in the future, uh, we are trying, we are trying to play with booking notification. We are also have use cases with developers that they need to, to use some kind of uh, topics and queue, queue with the Kafka writing queue. And we are trying to do some stuff with booking notification. But for now, this is uh, the status of the, way, yeah, the company. Okay, seeing the, the effect for them. This is more, more or less the picture we have in adding on Ceph. Until now, everything fine. I think that company is happy for serving to that team for so, Thank you for your presence here. Any questions? Oh, this works? Hey, excellent. Okay, hi. Nice presentation. Uh, when did you deploy the Ceph Plus first? Uh, so first was, deployment, when, when was it? The first one, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't work in that company, but I think it was in... No, 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 here in Adyen. Am I? My first trust or me present? Well, I don't know who, who deployed it. When, when was it? Like, I think that was years? at the beginning, the beginning of 2022, was the first person. Yeah, okay, funny story. Uh, I, I went for an interview to ITIN, and um, yeah, I was never hired, though, obviously, but um, for an hour we were discussing the Ceph back then. And I think it was four or five years ago, and I was a big Ceph evangelist. I was actually looking to for a place where it would be nice to deploy it. And I think one of the things that they said back then, because I was never asked anything else except the questions about the Ceph, was don't go to hyperconverge because that's not going to play out. Well, it's hindsight 2020, but thank you. Thank you, thank you. Yep. Um, do you use the S3 rate limit for your developers, for example, as well in your environment? That's in the plan. Right now, we will use rate limit, but not using the Dragos away functionality. We are using things in top of all of all the browser gateway, and then we are using the rate limit in the of the engine itself. That were nice, but our plan is to and add another layer of rate limit that what we be using the browser gateway functionality. But for that, you need to at least update to Pacific or Quinchy that is the one that has the functionality. Okay, and uh, what about um, S S3 API uh, features like versioning, um, log objects, and so on? Yeah, we are already doing that, but that depends on the customer, not of us as other. Right now, if a, if, a, if a user want to use versioning because they want to prevent that you delete a, an object by mistake or something, you can enable that and you can use it. 
but now so the, the thing that we are doing with that is at least uh, have the knowledge to when they have a problem which uh, we have, we have yeah just just from my side and advice then you should test your multi site setup if you if you want to introduce multi site in the near future someone then you should test it quite well with with all these features because we have seen multiple problems in this area over i think last years thank you